Every now and then you're going to end up with an unbustable spike, a spike that comes shooting out of your object and you just can't seem to get rid of it. In this example, what we're going to look at is an unbustable spike and what you can do to get rid of them. All right? So first of all, there's a bunch of things you can do. This is an unbustable spike. This is a spike, first of all. It's a big, long piece of geometry that looks that's come shooting out of the object, um, and uh, you just don't know what to do. You know, you change the depth, and you go, oh, man, it's just, it's just there. You change the, um, the bevel, and uh, that doesn't seem to matter either. Like if I switch over to uh, power bevel, you know, it just looks even worse and worse and worse. All right? So here's what you do. The first thing that you do is you go down to Spike Buster. And Spike Buster will attempt to knock these little guys off. And most of the time it works great. Now in this case, it's an unbustable spike. It's one that does not respond to Spike Buster. And so it's not working. So we can't do that. All right, if that doesn't work, the next thing we do is we go to our preview object smoothness. And what we do now is we look for a setting where the spike disappears. Now in this case, uh, what we're doing is actually changing the number of polygons. You can see how crude it's made here. And then as we get add more and more smoothing, the object gets smoother and smoother and smoother. Well, a lot of times uh, Spike Buster will work once you find the magic amount of smoothing that sort of, there's sort of like a, a mathematical dark hole, black hole that's happening right at the point where the spike is coming out. And so sometimes changing this will work. Once you find the proper number here, you match it over here because uh, you know how this works. Preview is you're only going to see this when you're in preview mode. When you do a final rendering like this, you're actually using the settings in the final mode over here. So if, for instance, uh, say 67 was the real number that you had to use that made the spike disappear, you want to make sure that this also goes to 67 like that. And then when you render the test, you'll end up with exactly the same amount of smoothing in the final rendering as you do in the preview rendering. Okay? Now, in this particular case, that didn't work either. So the next thing we do is we come down here and we go to Edge Offset. Edge Offset will either add to the thickness or reduce the thickness of your object. And a lot of times, this will clean up problems with the models too. Now, the weird thing is you see, first of all, the, uh, you don't have to add a lot of Edge Offset, just a tiny amount is going to be enough for it to completely recompute all the polygons made um, by the original vectors and that'll clean up a lot of the problems that happen. So in this case though you see what's happening here is it if for some reason it's thinking that the model is two separate pieces you see that's a that's a clue that something is really going on here that's beyond your control okay so edge offset's not working, spike buster is not working. Um, one other thing that you can do is you can go into your info section and you can turn on meshing. Now let me show you, I'll, I'll uh, meshing right here. Once we turn this on, what you're gonna do is it, it, it applies a grid mesh to the faces. You see there's no mesh there and there's a nice little mesh right here. That oftentimes will uh, completely recompute. If you're having trouble with holes, meshing will fix any problems dealing with holes. In this case, it does not fix the bust, the spike. So, you know, you can't bust the spike yet. So, this is one of those things where after you go through those four things to try to make the object work, and it's still not working, you're going to have to go back to the original vectors. Now, fortunately, we now have our own drawing window right inside the program. So, here's what we do. Uh, this is the path selection tool. Now you see when you click on this, you don't see anything weird. It's got a nice bounding box. The path all appears there. Everything is good. When we go to uh, point mode, uh, what you're going to find is this. If you click on this, uh, you see suddenly we have a big fat um, point right there. Now the weird thing about this is that normally big fat points appear only at the ends of open paths. For instance, if I take this pencil here and I just draw a curve, you see there's that same style of big fat point there, and there's another one that's the beginning and the end of the open path. Now, to join these things, all you do is you just take one open path and you uh, one open endpoint and drop it onto the other, and then it asks you if you want to close it up. You say sure thing, and now you've got a new object. See, there's a new object. Uh, but oddly enough, there is no double point here. The way you'd check that is to just click on it. So don't don't draw a box around it because then you'll be selecting both a top and a bottom 
point if they're sitting on top of each other. What we do here though is we just click on it and then drag it and you see both sides are moving at the same time. If there were two points here, one would be dragging out, leaving the other one behind. So hitting undo, you see that goes back and you, this is a real head scratcher, right? Because there's nothing, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with this object. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's how we have to fix this guy. If I take the pencil tool, now normally the way the pencil tool works is this. You click on a red line, draw around a point, and then come back to the red line, and you see that will add, that will edit the path, adding a new path, and skipping over the old path, right? So that's what's supposed to happen. In this case, though, watch what happens. If we start on this red line, skip over the big fat point, and come back to the red line, we get a loop. So you see it didn't remove any of the old path, but it does show us something significantly wrong, okay? And it changed it. That's what we were looking for, is we we're looking for some kind of a change. All right, now if we go back to here, you see we still, now we've got this weird little mess. It created a, it shows us now the double points, okay? So before they were sitting on top of each other, if we move this here like this and then zoom in on it, we can operate on this just a little bit more. Now the tricky thing about this is this, if I try to, if I double click on this point to try to delete it, it'll, it'll crash the program. Uh, I can delete any of these other nice little points right here, but for some reason deleting this one is going to cause a crash at this point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add another point, okay, like right here. We're just going to double click on the path like that. You see that it adds another point for us, and now we're able to select this point and delete it. And now you see we've got a start and an end of a motion path and then we can bring this guy back together, drop it on top, it says let's close it with the smooth point and then retouch this back like that. And now check it out, our, our uh, we've busted the spike. The spike is gone. Long live the f nice clean motion paths. I'm sorry, nice clean vectors. Okay, now there's one other thing about this that I want to show you. And that is right here. This is the same file, but in the process of cleaning it up, um, I deleted the other stuff. There was other stuff around this one particular number three. Okay, by deleting all those other pieces, it shows me this. Now, again, if I if I select this using our path tool, well, if I select it using our object tool like this, you see you see the whole path, all the whole object lights up in red, so you really can't see what's going on. If we go to our path selection tool though, this happens. You see we get half the object in red and half of it still blue. If I click on this object, now I've got the bottom part in red and blue, and that's creating the exact same motion path. The reason why is because it's it's trying to link up those beginning and end points automatically for you. So here's what we were talking about before. If I click on this point, and drag it out, you see it's only moving one of the two points that are sitting exactly on top of each other. Same thing down here. If I click on this point and move it out, you see it leaves one behind. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to move it away, let go. Then we move it back. And when we do that, it says, would you like to join these curves? You say, sure, as a smooth point. And now check it out. It's all cleaned up for us. We do the same thing with the bottom. We move it away, let go come back and drop it on top itself and say smooth point and there we go. Now we once again have a very nice looking um, 3D object. Alright, so there you go. That's how to clean up some completely unbustable spikes.